So it's my pleasure to have you here today. Um, you just finished uh, the coaching program with the MBB Offer Machine and you successfully secured offers from Bain and & Company and also from EY Partner. So first of all, congratulations for this. Um, we are currently in a pretty tight and competitive uh, recruiting market in what concerns top strategy consulting. So this is really significant and uh, achievement. So congrats. Thank you so much, Dr. Sidi. I appreciate you and all the work that you and the team did to get me to this point. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, it was 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 quite a journey. So uh, and we will speak it, uh, in a bit uh, about how we work together to make you offer ready, quote unquote. Um, but um, the first thing I would like to discuss is what was your initial starting situation right at the point when you reached out to us to seek professional guidance for your consulting interview prep? So what were the challenges that you faced and what then uh, eventually fueled your decision to join the MBB uh, Offer Machine program? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So earlier on in my uh, consulting recruiting preparation, I had spent lots of hours reading some of the mainstream uh, case uh, prep books and using some of the other kind of mainstream uh, sources online, uh, you know, the typical buckets thing. And yes. I would estimate that I put in probably 40 to 50 uh, hours when I then first started casing with my colleagues at the university. And I found out that I had no clue what was uh, going on uh, in those cases. <laughs> And so the, the bucket method uh, didn't really make sense. I always felt that it was more or less about uh, pure memorization of frameworks and then guessing which ones you had to use and or yeah. merge to address the case. And even yeah. then, uh, all you had was a list of things to look at, right, with no clear structure on how to proceed uh, with the case. And we both know that's nowhere near what real consultants do in, 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 in solving real life problems. And it's not what you need to do to pass a case interview. So I felt very frustrated and wanted to understand the logic uh, behind work working through a case interview. And one day, I don't think I've told you this, I found a post that you had on Prep Lounge uh, okay. <laughs> explaining to someone how to go about a diagnostic case, right? And it was exactly the logic that I was looking for. It was, it was like something kind of clicked. And so based on that, I did some research on the program, reached out to you. We had that initial uh, chat, and then I understood the value that the program brings in terms of teaching and how to think and succeed yep. through cases, and I decided to join. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, sounds pretty classical, <laughs> as you can imagine, right? It's it's exactly the thing uh, that is true for many people, right? They, they first start to, you know, uh, uh, delving into cases based on the very popular uh, resources that you usually find, right, that you sometimes also get provided by the university. And then uh, at uh, at some point, they realize that this is not what will bring them to the, yeah, to the required level. Right? So now, the goal of our preparation was obviously to get you offer ready for the top consulting firms. Um, but what you have then learned and internalized during the program is, uh, yeah, indeed very different from what is written in these mainstream case books, um, uh, which are available on the market. And what we have established is a much more mature and I would even say partner-like thinking pattern, right? Um, and this is then constituting a very robust methodical grounding on which you then could build this much stronger and more rigorous case solving muscle. So now, if you really reflect back, how has this more mature approach to cases and this independence from these buckets and frameworks, how has this then helped you to be successful in your actual interviews once you then, you know, walked into the interview rooms uh, with these big firms? Yeah, so let me just start by saying that it's absolutely and completely different than what's available in the mainstream uh, market, right? This program teaches you uh, how to think, right? It teaches you a robust problem-solving logic, and this freed me from the constraints that many candidates face uh, when adopting an unmethodical approach uh, to solving cases. So uh, I was able to filter through all the noise that I encountered uh, in the cases across the prompts, exhibits, brainstorming questions, and I was able to drive the case in a structured and logical manner uh, through the recommendation, right? I didn't have to memorize frameworks. I didn't worry about what industry the case was about. Yeah. And I didn't even, uh, let's say, care about what type of case I was going to get because I knew that the logic that I've internalized would allow me to efficiently solve 
any case in a structured manner, right? Which is what the interviewer is is looking for. They're looking for how you think, not how you memorize. And because of the confidence that I had going into the interview, I felt much more relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. Which allowed me and the interviewer to enjoy uh, the process. And uh, I did a total of six cases across Mm -hmm. EY Parthenon and and Bain. And Mm -hmm. I received compliments from all my interviewers on the approach that I was taking in working with them uh, through uh, the case, right? And I was told that they really enjoyed uh, this kind of approach, which I think was a part of the key in me receiving uh, the offers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is this is indeed one of the absolute core things. And what I usually also tell uh, people at the beginning, right, when they start uh, uh, working with us, is that actually there's good news for all of you guys, because contrary to what you probably also uh, saw uh, back then in these case books, I mean, there's no 16 case types or 24 case types or whatever, right, where you have to learn the set of two dozens of frameworks, and then you just hope that you won't get any question, which is outside of these 20. Yes. Uh, right, um, and this is absolutely not what it is. It is in in, in many ways it's the opposite of what actually uh, corresponds to the business model of these strategy consulting firms, right? Because what what they want to want to see is, and the only reason why they give you a case is not because they want to see how good you are at memorizing stuff, right? Someone who's super good at memorizing stuff. Guess what? This person will not earn Bain money, all right? <laughs> it's about whether you really are an outstanding problem solver. So the reason why they ask you this is they want to actually understand how do you cope with a situation? How do you approach a situation where you have no clue about the context, right? It's the very it's it's by design, right? And uh, uh, this is also one of the things where people get misguidance, right? When they are told, "Hey, you should read industry primers, acquaint yourself with the top twenty global industries, so that you can impress the interview with your industry knowledge." And they don't understand that, especially at the MBB level, this is one of the biggest reasons for rejection. Because then the interviewers, even if you solve the case perfectly well, the interviewer's interpretation is just, okay, he solved the case because he has a lot of knowledge in this domain. So this means when he faces an unknown problem, he will be helpless. Reject. (laughs) Right? So all all of these things where people get this massive misguidance, right? So I'm very glad that you mentioned this because this is really something, as you can, yeah, as you know, right, which is bugging us and which was also uh, the driving force behind us creating this program. One thing that I would say uh, that I have observed from other colleagues who went into interviews with MBVs is so they took the typical approach, the mainstream approach into casing. And uh, when interviewing with partners at the MBV level, they were then challenged on their logic in the initial uh, structuring or let's call it a framework phase as some of the mainstream people know it as. And uh, they often failed to describe their logic uh, in a structured way, which which kind of got them out of the race very early on. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah, and this is exactly uh, the very unfortunate consequence out of this, right? It might sometimes still be enough to you know uh, get you past the first initial rounds, but uh, when they really pressure test your thinking, um, yeah, there the air uh, usually gets very thin <laughs> because usually there's not too much thinking behind it. <laughs> Cool. So now uh, let's maybe also uh, speak about another dimension, right? So how was this whole preparation journey on an emotional level for you? So because uh, as usual, when you are when you're acquiring new skill, right, when you're going through a transformation, this probably did not go super smoothly all the time, right? So did you have to push through some challenging phases? So for me personally, I, I'd say that the emotional side was a bit of a, a roller coaster earlier on in my case prep uh, journey. Uh, I would even venture to say that for me, it was uh, the emotional element was more difficult to master uh, earlier on than the technical element. Uh, but by practicing with you and the program peers, I was able to significantly improve my confidence and reach the point of entering the interviews without a hint of doubt uh, of my ability to, to, to make it through through the interview, right? And I would say one key element that allowed me to push through the emotional bumps Uh, during the the cases, and those will probably happen in some of the cases, no matter how well prepared uh, someone is, was constantly reminding myself is that was that the case is not an exam, right? It's an exercise in in logic, which you kind of emphasize multiple times uh, throughout the the program. And it's kind of working through a problem with a hypothetical uh, colleague. And this really helped me in shifting my emotions back to the right spot, uh, because I knew that I could drive the case towards the end with my uh, logic that I've internalized. 
Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, this this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so uh, now um, uh, at the moment, right, many folks are just starting uh, to plan out uh, their preparation for the next recruiting season, right? So uh, now what is your, let's say, number one tip for someone who's just embarking on their preparation for MBB? What would you say? Number one tip. Okay, this is a tough one because I have a lot of tips, uh, <laughs> but l let's put it this way. Uh, I have two different tips, one for people who are in the MBB offer machine uh, program and one uh, for the people who are not in the program. So for those who are in the program, I say trust the process. It works. Just make sure you follow what Dr. CD and the team is telling you to do. Uh, for those who are not in the program, my number one tip is to join the program. <laughs> uh, trust me, don't waste your time looking at buckets. Uh, this program will on not only help you in getting your MBB offer, but will also change your ways of thinking uh, and help you internalize logic that will benefit you uh, throughout your career. Uh, so yeah, join the program. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hamdi. Uh, amazing conversation. And uh, yeah, congratulations again, right? Uh, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but really in the in the current uh, conditions, this is really, really a significant achievement to pull off several offers. So congratulations again. And I'm sure this is just the beginning of an amazing career in the domain of uh, st uh, top strategy consulting. Thank you so much, Dr. CD. I, I appreciate the support that I received from you and the team, and uh, I wish I joined the, your program earlier. <laughs> <Would've>. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.